Alright, we're back at the Magical Arts Hour. Uh, our first guest today, I'm very excited to have him here. He's a good friend of mine, I know from the community. He's known as the bad boy of hypnosis. My good buddy, Mr. Dave Curran. Let's get a round of applause for Dave hey. Curran. Good to have you on the good show. Evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Absolute honor. First time ever guest, first ever guest, no one else? First time ever, brother. You guys must have been really, really desperate. We weren't that <laughs> desperate. But we wanted one of the biggest names in Canada, and we got him right here. Oh, wow. Now, enough of Excellent. us kissing each other's butts. <laughs> Um, now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Dave is a hypnotist, and he's not your average hypnotist because most of these hypnosis guys, they just put people under and make it really cold and really hot and do kind of kooky things like bark at the moon. I've seen Dave's show a couple of times, and if you haven't seen it, you probably should, because he does all the things that when you're sitting in the audience at a regular hypnosis show, you say, why is that guy not doing that? We're going to get into that a little bit more as we go along. But first, Dave, um, I understand you have a, a background in radio originally, and, um, and so we're going to talk about that a little bit. But first and foremost, how does one, or more specifically you, get into hypnosis? How do you learn this? Why did you become a hypnosis? A very, very misspent childhood. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, Much it, like all magicians. Uh, yes, yeah, so there, there, there's no path. It wasn't like I was in grade six and like, oh, I want to be a hypnotist when I grew up. It wasn't, wasn't like that. Uh, I always dabbled in magic when I was a teenager and growing up, and I always wanted to be David Copperfield. I wanted to be the guy on stage jumping in out of boxes, making tigers disappear and all that kind of stuff. And I, I did it semi-professionally, just doing gigs here and there, a lot of amateur, st amateur stuff. But and it, sorry, did, at what age was this? Uh, starting around 15, 16, okay. up until my early 20s, I guess. But it, it never really panned out how I wanted to. I guess I'm just not good at magic, to be quite honest and, and frank with you. It just never really clicked. I, I guess I don't have the dexterity or the coordination as all you other fine guys do. So uh, I always dabbled in hypnosis. I always did a show maybe once a year here and there. And then just one day I decided, you know what, that's it. I'm going to do this full time and uh, make this my career. And here we are about eight years later. And I mean, like, can anyone, someone perhaps watching this show go, that's so cool. I'd love to be able to be a performance hypnosis. Hi hypnotists. Are there, I mean, is this a learn online kind of thing? Is, are there schools? I mean, we talked about, uh, we've certainly talked in the past anyway about um, do you need to have a radio voice, a sexy voice, one that kind of will tap into whatever it is that it's tapping into. Right. Maybe you could elaborate a little bit on that. Well, I, I don't have any kind of special powers. Mm -hmm. It's a skill. Okay. And it's a skill that anyone can learn. Just if you want to learn how to play the piano, you can go learn how to play the piano. Okay. Something you can learn. Yeah, you can learn online. There, there's ways to learn online. There's ways to read books. Or there's courses you can take to learn to be a hypnotist and learn some hypnosis skills. But you got to remember, I'm a stage hypnotist. Okay. I'm an entertainer first, hypnotist second. So my job on stage is to entertain people, make people laugh, and give them a good evening. That's something that takes a lot of time. That, that takes a lot of chops to do that. And I got my basics from all that by doing improv mm -hmm. uh, with Second City, oh, with, the, with the Bad Dog, and uh, just getting up on stage, learning how to uh, position myself, stage myself, uh, comedic timing, and all that kind of stuff. And that's the most important thing mm -hmm. with any kind of entertainer, whether you can entertain first, as opposed Absolutely. to, you know. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'll just say real quickly, I couldn't agree with you more. As you know, I've been doing magic for you know just over 11 years now but I started late like at age 34 you can do the math I'm 45 people but a good looking 45 and um, uh, you know that's why I get hired a lot over guys who have had 20 25 years experience because I'm a fun guy to have at the party I entertain and I live and die by that philosophy so I get right. it. but anyway carrying on about hypnosis in your show yeah and, and uh, as you mentioned before with radio yes I used to work in radio that was a long time ago that was uh, putting myself through university working in radio and it just you know, unless it certainly you're, helps with the speech you uh, know, absolutely unless you're a top guy in radio like yourself you're not gonna get paid <laughs> the big bucks so uh, it wasn't a career that I was going to sustain over a long period of time. Uh, the radio voice helps, yeah. but it's not necessary. Mm. It, it helps to uh, entertain the audience so they listen to a pleasant, soothing voice. Yeah. But you can be on stage with a squeaky uh, bobcat kind of voice, and you can still put someone still in an induction. Yeah, the voice is just a... 
nice little bonus. Well, let's I guess, get into the people. nuts and bolts of what is hypnosis. Like, I mean, and let me preface it with: I mean, people can go to um, a doctor to, to apparently get hypnotherapy to be cured of smoking, for example. Uh, I don't know if you necessarily go under. I've seen your show. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is a whole other thing we can talk about in a second, but the believability element. And, and you have a, const, uh, a, a pretty uh, common or, or regular retort to that, like, come on, is it really real? And you always say... Of course it's real. I, I, I don't need to fake it. Because there's right. so many people coming up on stage, there, there's no need to. I do shows all around the world, well, all across North America, I guess. If I was going to put actors on stage, I would be absolutely broke by now. Yeah to hire different actors, about 20 of them every single show. It's impossible, there's no need to. There's always people who are gonna come up on stage, there's always people who are gonna go under. It's the, well, the and we'll get back to what that. exactly that is, you know, going under and who it works on and who it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, but what, have I, what I've always said, because again, I've seen your show two or three times now, and, and I, I am floored every time. Uh, what's amazing about your show, actually, is it's different every time, because depending on who you have up there, and that must be a joy for you. you that, know, like that's what keeps me going. Yeah. I, I never know what's going to happen. You know, I, I have certain you know, blocks I want to hit, but the people on stage always say different stuff. They always do different things. They always react differently, and we, we throw in little bits here and there, and it, it's like an improv show. Sometimes we go down different paths, and it makes it fun for me. It right. keeps me on my toes as well. And there's also that the repeat factors. People keep coming back to the show on, on you know, right. several times, and they always see a different show. Mm -hmm. Well, like, like I said, I've seen the show a bunch of times, and um, you know, I'm always promoting it, and, and not just because you're my buddy and I believe in it, but I also believe that whoever I'm sending there is going to really enjoy the show. And all you people out there in webland, uh, we, we'll get into the details, and we'll run it with a bumper at the end of the show and all that, but uh, some, some late breaking news. Uh, he just re-signed with Dave and Buster's at Highway 407. Highway 407 in Vaughan, yeah. yeah Starting... September 24th. September 24th, every Saturday through June. And you should definitely check out the show. But we'll get more into that in a second, your website and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I was going to get to was, <coughs> when people ask me, and I tell about it, you know, what I saw, and we'll get into some of the things that he does in a moment, um, I get a lot of that from my friends too. You know, come on, is that real? I mean, is he really doing it? Aren't they plant? My answer to them is come on up on stage. Come to the show. Yeah. Come to the show. I don't say come up on stage, because my feeling is, if if you're if you're trying to test it, all right, let's see if this is going to work. It likely won't work. And this is a nice segue into who does it work on, who does it not work on. Like if someone, let me just one more thing. If Someone's <coughs> trying to challenge it. I don't believe this works. Let me see him hypnotize me. Are you going to be able to put a guy like that Absolutely under? not. Okay. We're, we're, it's not a pissing contest to see who has a stronger right. will of mine. It, it, it's, we work together to make it happen. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to hypnotize yourself, it's not going to work. You hypnotize yourself. You fuck yourself up. I'll just show you how to do mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. Now, 100% of the population can be hypnotized if they want to be hypnotized. Every single person can if be hypnotized. You're open if they, to the notion if of they it. choose to be okay. hypnotized. No one can be forced to be hypnotized. It's like what you see in the movies and, and TV shows where you know they're walking around with the watch and waving in front of their right. eyes. The next time they, they're walking around like zombies, right. wanting to rob a bank. Manchurian Candidate, for example. It, it cannot happen. Okay. It, there, there's no way to be hypnotized the against queen of spades <laughs> means kill kill right. exactly yeah. that's, and, that's and, fictitious and, and a lot of a lot of people's misconceptions about hypnosis comes from the bullshit that they see on tv mm -hmm. shows and mm -hmm. movies and stuff like that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so when they come to my show they're in for a little bit of a, a rude awakening of what hypnosis okay. actually is but that being said after about 20 minutes into the show they're not even considering whether this is real or fake they're just so entertained and so mystified by what's going on on stage right Dare I say it, they're coming to get you. No, no, no. Well, that's my comedy, corny and cheesy. Um, okay, so, so then let's, let's oh, we're going to leave this behind in a sec, but from a scientific point of view, explain the best you can to a lay audience what exactly goes on between you and what's coming out of your mouth and the person that's sitting on the stage and you're getting in their head somehow. Yeah. Because the, the stuff they do, and we'll get into that in a second, is beyond belief. It's all, it's really a matter of perspective. What they're seeing and hearing versus what the audience is seeing and hearing are two different things. Uh, there, there's no secrets, I'm not hiding anything. No, But the way you interpret things from the audience are, is very different from the way you'd interpret it if you're sitting on stage. Hypnosis, in my definition, it's, it's a hypnotist giving the subject a series of commands. These commands could be verbal, they can be physical, they can be psychological or social. 
And when these commands are given in the proper order, they're going to result in a logical finish. Okay. And that's what Which is, is the all action about. you try to get them to yeah. perform. Uh, my job is to get them all relaxed. Right. Get them on a, a, in a focused state, state of concentration. And also to turn off the on and off switch, the right and wrong switch. Right. You know, when we're in a professional setting or in a social setting, you have that switch on mm -hmm. where you're on your best behavior. In a hypnosis show, I turn that switch off wow. inside you. Interesting analogy. Interesting analogy. Yeah. Because again, I've been to the show and now we're going to get into what he does in the show, um, he is called the bad boy of hypnosis for a reason, as I mentioned off the top. It's because he's typically doing things uh, in his show that you don't see in another hypnosis type show like his, minus the bad boy element. <laughs> so let's start with some basics. I've seen guys take cucumbers and you convince them like that they're a girl and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, uh, a prostitute, and they really want this thing, and they literally start to go to work on it in front of oh, an yeah. audience of like 150 people. And they're, they're very proud of, of their efforts, well, This too. is the thing. And then it just gets crazier and crazier. You start, um, not to give away too much of the show, and he's got plenty of elements to it, so again, I highly recommend checking it out, but you, you throw on, you know, 70s porn-style music, and then you start throwing out blow-up dolls, and these guys are like, like getting down and dirty and jerking the like the gherkin and all that. Yeah. No matter what, you're gonna tell. There's nothing that you can say that makes me believe that someone is not inhibited by that. Because to me, when you do hypnosis, you're not gonna do anything you would never ever well, do. Well, th there are people who are inhibited by that. I, I make sure they're not on my stage. Okay. We, we start off with about 20 people, and I try to narrow that down to about eight or 10 people of the best people. Okay. The people who I know are right under, and make sure that switch is completely turned off. Gotcha. And that's gonna result in a good show. I don't want people who are, you know, going to be restrictive and, and they're going to limit what they're going to do. And a good hypnotist is going to make sure they have the best subjects on stage. And that's what we do. And that's why you see all those crazy guys yeah. doing all that, that crazy stuff. They know exactly what they're doing. Mm. They know where they are. They know that this is a cucumber. They know that's an inflatable doll, but they just don't care. Okay. I'll leave, I'm going to ask you one more question about specifically about the show. And one of my favorite uh, bits that you do um, of course, all these people are under hypnosis, and he has specific people doing whatever he's commanding them to do. Um, but there's a lot of repetitive nature where, you know, you might have hypnotized someone, and then like, you'll leave that for 20 minutes and come back to it, and the guy will spring into action when you say a trigger word. Um, when you have the guy, you tell the guy that you're thirsty, <laughs> and to get him a drink, get you a drink from the back of the room, because there's a bar at the back of the room. But if I recall correctly, it's something like his feet are glued to the ground. And the only way he can release his right foot is if he says, F me, <laughs> and then release his left foot in the A, right? Right. And right. then what happens is for this guy to get you the water, and then he's like, F me, in the F, F me, yeah. in the F, which is absolutely hysterical. What I'm going to get, he gets to the back, he comes all the way back, and you're like, can you go a little quicker, man? He's like, F me, in the F, F me. He gets back and you're like, thanks, man. And you tap him on the shoulder and go sleep. And the guy collapses like he's just been shot. That blows me away. I get the whole, like, you know, I give me a little time. No one's going to do anything. Don't. But how is it that in an instant you can touch a person and command that? Is it that he's so far gone in, in the induction at that point? Or? Well, yeah, don't use the word gone. Because using the word okay. gone uh, insinuates deep, that. Deep, yeah, is that fair? Gone okay. means he's crazy, okay. he's wacky. Fair enough. Deep means he's really focused. Induced. He's really paying attention, really induced. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't, I, I'm sure it's very entertaining to watch, but I don't see that as being any more of a bigger feat than someone giving head to a cucumber. Well, or, fair enough. Or having, I'm talking about the instantaneousness right. of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, I mean, when he collapses, it's like, right. he, you know, it's not, it's not planned, you know? Right, right. I mean, people stand up from their chairs and kind of look, <laughs> you know, it's absolutely hysterical to see. The, yeah, it is a fun bit. And the audience yeah. does like that because that's one of the first times where they get up close with one of the subjects. The subject's mm -hmm. walking through the audience and they get to see the person. They get to see that their eyes. They get to see how glazed over they are. It's fantastic, fantastic. And, and we'll just say this, at the end of the show, he does take them out, uh, de-induce, is that, or deduce, or what's the opposite <laughs> of induction? <laughs> Deduction? No. Deduction. He, he gets them out of the state in a very slow process. Um, and, and I also remember this, you always say, when you will leave here, you will have the best sleep of your life, and, and, and so on and so on. So they are getting something out of it. And that's the other thing about your show people need to know, <laughs> is without the guests, 
coming up, or, or, or the, the volunteers from the audience coming up on stage. There is no show. Yeah, that you must know, be a challenge. People for you. always come to me after the show and go, "Oh, that was a great show," and I'm, I'm like, "Thanks, but really, wasn't my show. I was just the, the conductor in the orchestra. The people on stage are the true stars of the show, They're, and every week it's a different set of stars." You know, I put the show together, but they are the show. Without them, there is no show. No right. one comes up on stage, no show. What do I do? Right. Knock on wood, it's never happened before. Right. right. But we've always had people go under. But yeah, without the audience, there is no show. And you know, it's it's a cliche they use in Vegas, but it's a show where you get to come up on stage and be the star right. instantaneously. Right. Right. It's true. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we do this? Um, could you give us like I know you can't induce someone right now because that takes a while, twenty minutes, twenty five minutes, whatever it might be. But could you? Is there any way you could give us a little example um, of uh, of uh, hypnotic um, treatment, if you will? Yeah, yeah, we could absolutely. Do you want to do it on me? I mean, some people think I'm a magician, so maybe I'm in on it. But do you want to do you want to bring on one of our? No, no, we, we can just do it. Do it on yeah, me? yeah, yeah. Well, maybe we'll get the people to do it at home we'll at the get, same yeah, time. Yeah, it's more for the people for doing it at home. And all right. We're just gonna have some fun with it, and like uh, like I said, it's just all about giving suggestions and giving commands. For example, I put my hand like this. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask you to do that, but you knew just to do that. Right. So we're going to do some fun just like this. So put your hands up like this. Yeah, it's conditioning. Right? And people at home like right this too. Put your elbows up like this so they're perfectly flat. Middle fingers or index finger up like this. Spread it as far as possible. Keep, try to keep those elbows up. Look at the space between. Mm -hmm. Now close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Relax your eyes though. Relax your eyes. Just pretend that there's magnets on the tip of those fingers. Oh, they're already and coming the together. They're coming closer <laughs> and closer and closer and closer and closer. And at the count of three, they're going to be ten times stronger. One, two, wow. three, ten times stronger. Open your eyes. Go ahead. <laughs> See? Now, folks, I'm a magician, okay, and I have no clue how that was done. It's got to be. Yeah, that's, that's more, there's there's got to be science behind there, that. I'll, I, I okay. can explain it's, it too. Like, like, there, okay. There's no secrets here. That is more of the power of suggestion okay. than it is the power Not of hypnosis. Not a muscle memory thing? or uh, A little bit of mu uh, muscle memory, yes, but it's more like, uh, you know, you need to take a piss. You yeah. really need to go. <laughs> you really need to go really badly yeah, right yeah. about now. You hear, you hear trickling water, yeah. you, you see the waterfalls, and it's starting to build up yeah. more and more and more. Yeah. You're starting to have that feeling. Same with this, it's also with a little bit of the muscles too. Right. And, and it, it's expected of you that your fingers are going to close. Right. So your mind, your subconscious saying, okay, those fingers are going to go together. Right. And sure enough, they right. eventually do. And I guess on the surface, you would say, yeah, my eyes are closed, but you know, I'm not going to fall for this. And then it, it just it starts to happen. And that's, right. that's the neat part. And of it. course, there's the muscle memory. In this position, yeah. your fingers naturally do want to close. Right. But why aren't you forcing yourself to keep them open? You can, right. easily, you can open your eyes. True. And, you know, True. True. There's nothing forcing them except for the mind. That came very, very clearly. Yes. That's cool. All right, I'll tell you what. We're going to uh, wrap this up shortly. A couple more things I want no, to talk won't. about. <laughs> We're going to have Dave Kern here for another three days. So don't go anywhere. It's going to be a 72 hour uh, uh, hypnosathon. And I'm getting the signal from the producer. Like, All right. Wrap this segment. <laughs> but he hypnotized me, Randy. What do you want me to do? <laughs> God, try it, man. That's what we're going to do. We'll induce him next time. Okay, so real quickly wrapping up, um, I wanted to ask you quickly about, uh, and I hope we can talk about this, uh, the, the TV show, One Hour Special, that is uh, uh, it's still, still in production. It, it's still in production. Okay. It is definitely going to be airing. It's cool. going to be, it's like a little one I hour. I was a part of that. I got yeah. to play a role. Thank you. And, and you're probably guest Jason yeah. Palter, too. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's just a like one hour snapshot of the day in the life of the hypnotist, yeah. pretty much. So it's a lot of fun. Some behind the scenes shots. Yep. That will be airing on Rogers at some point. Cool. Uh, get some more information. TV people. That's yeah. why you gotta go web based, people. Yeah, I'm just yeah. Saying. I'm just saying. We can uh, get updates on that by keeping in touch on Facebook or my excellent. website, davecurrentlive.com. Excellent, excellent. And um, we did the Healthy Gourmet show back yes. in the spring. That was a lot of fun. We're and going for burgers later? We're going for burgers later. <laughs> I wanna ask you really quickly about uh, your trips to Vegas, because you do go there quite frequently. So, because yeah. you know, that's where the big bucks are. And here's an obvious question. We'll, we'll try and wrap it up with this. Um, but basically, why are you here and why are you not in Vegas doing it every night on the Strip? Uh, at some point I will. Just uh, right now, things are going very good for me in Toronto. Right. Uh, enjoying a lot of big audiences, a lot of big shows, having a great time and staying loyal to my uh, home country for now. But at some point in the cards, uh, I do plan and hope to move to Vegas and uh, have a regular home on this trip there. Excellent. Well, in the meantime, you're going to be able to check them out at Dave & Buster's, which is at Highway 400 and Highway 7. Saturday night, starting September 24th, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. And he's running right through to June. But don't sit around and wait. Get out and see this show. And he often has uh, magician friends as well, like uh, Jason Palter, for example, who's coming up very next. 
uh, opening act as well. And I, whenever I do go, I do walk around just for fun in the audience. You get to see a whole bunch of uh, magic and hip hypnosis. Listen, I want to thank you, Dave, for thank coming you. in, man. Great job. Honestly, my first guest ever. Let's get a round of applause for Dave. Give me a trivia question one day. The bad boy of hypnosis. We'll be right back.